Welcome to another Wimbledon video, and this one's gonna be looking at researching with Google Books. This is a screencast, so I'm just gonna be talking and showing you what's on the screen. This is something I tell my students all the time, and I thought it might be helpful for some of you to, to have a crack at this as well. When we're researching with Google, let's just do this as an example. If I'm researching with Google, and let's say I wanna look at uh, how successful Pericles was as a leader. I might type in uh, Pericles, successful leader legacy, something to that effect. Now when I click that into to Google, I receive history.com, Project Pericles, so maybe that looks interesting, uh, an encyclopedia, another encyclopedia, ThinkSwap, whatever that is, uh, Wikipedia, an essay that may be about that, maybe not, historyworld.org, ducksters.com, and Brainy Quote. So as you can see, the first few entries for Pericles aren't as helpful as they could be. They're generic type of websites, uh, most of which are probably relatively reliable, but aren't gonna give you really what you're looking for if you're, say, a stage six student and you wanna research and find some really good information. So when we're doing that, we wanna search and we wanna find information that has perhaps been published, information that you often find in a book. Now, not everyone can make it to the library, and some people's libraries only stock a couple of books that are helpful to them. So Google has this initiative where they have scanned in millions and millions of books and we're able to see parts or portions of these books. It's very simple to get there. Just type in Google Books and you'll find the first result is books.google.com.au. And when I click on that, it's exactly the same as normal Google, but when I type in Pericles, successful leader, legacy, I actually start to receive where those terms appear in books. So for example, Donald Kagan, he is a Yale professor, pretty much the preeminent voice when it comes to looking at ancient Athens. So that's a very helpful one to start off with. The works of Xenophon, world history in documents, a comparative reader. We're getting some much more specific information and helpful information about it, a leader's, leader's legacy or philosophers, uh, philosophers and religious leaders. If on the next page, even better, we've got Pericles and the Conquest of History, a political biography, a whole bunch of other, other books, and all of these are books which have been published. So they've gone through the first hurdle of reliability. A company has decided to put their name onto this source, and it's going to be somewhat more reliable than what we'll find in history websites, for example. So if I click onto this, here we are, is the book on the left-hand side so that you can either shop for it or you can see the publisher, etc., and get all of your bibliographical details there. More importantly though, you'll see that we've got a whole bunch of highlighted words that you've looked up. So Pericles, legacy, two millennia after the Athenians' defeat, we still marvel at what they achieved, but the visible remains impressive as they are, do not constitute their most important legacy. Pericles confronted the problem, straight away we've got a relevant section of this book. And as you go through it, as I said, you're not gonna be able to read the whole book, but the parts that are relevant are there. And so you can get even more specific with your words, look for terms, for events, and it's, it's quite helpful in getting some specific kind of chunks of information that you can get from a reliable source. So that's why I suggest to students that they should use Google Books as well as normal Google or as well as going to the library. It doesn't replace everything, but as a helpful tool to you so that you can use that when researching. If you enjoyed this video or found it informative, feel free to click on one of the playlists above or click on the little W to subscribe to Wimbledon channel.